Starting the recording. What's up, bitches? It's another episode of World 1-1 Podcast. I am your host, Larry the Bearded and Woefully Exhausted Wonder. Uh, with me, as always, is my partner in crime, Eddie the Blackinator V. <laughs> I watched none of the Super Bowl. <laughs> I gave... yeah, I didn't either. Dude, Like I was totally jamming for for sunday when we were supposed to record and apparently i just suddenly died like five minutes before we we're we we're gonna record so that's that's entirely on me for the record that we're fucking late this week um like no shit we had plans to lay it down at like 9 30 and apparently at like 9 25 i died and i didn't wake up again until like 1 30 in the morning and i've got a bunch of missed messages from Corey and eddie and i'm like well shit so, but yeah, I was I totally that... ready for it because, dude, I had on my sports T-shirt. Like you've seen it, it's just it's big block lettering and it just says sports. <laughs> right, like, I sports ball the most. <laughs> sports ball is my favorite sports. Sports. My sports team is better than your sports team. I don't know what's happening, but our sports is the best. I heard the halftime was a mess. Uh... I don't know. I don't give a shit. I, I don't know that it could be inherently any stupider than last year's. Oh, everybody I, loved the Gaga I remember, was. Oh, Every- dude, last year's was the dumbest. F- I still <laughs> distinctly remember that at the end, she's just like, Super Bowl 51. Yeah. <laughs> and, every, uh, hey, people still loved it. People love Gaga. Like, I, I, I fucking cracked up going, seeing, like, memories on Facebook from a year ago from last year's. Super Bowl shit, and I'm like, oh yeah, because I had one pop up. It's like, why do all the backup dancers look like they're having a fucking seizure? Shoot, I, <laughs> I, 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 it was just like it's it see someone posted on you on uh, Twitter on their page that people who were in the stadium, like in the seats and stuff, it was quiet. Only people who cared about uh, Justin Timberlake singing was the crowd that was in front of them on the field. That was it. I was just like, yikes. Well, so like I've got nothing against Justin Timberlake personally. I don't like. I, I'm sure his music is just fine for somebody. I'm just sitting here going at this point, like for the halftime show. Do they just look at who was popular somewhere between five and ten years ago and go book them? Well, I think they want people who says like it would have been better to uh, bring Bruno, uh, Bruno Mars out, and then they yeah, just, uh, seriously I, like. He's at least almost contemporary at this point. It was it was weird because it was just like, how do you do a modern Super Bowl? Like, do you does it have to be always fun? Or you know, here's how like, you do here's how you do an appropriate halftime show. Find somebody that's charting in the Billboard top ten at the moment and go, you, you're up. It's not hard. Well, seriously. I think, well, I think with with Justin Timberland, he has a lot of hits, and because his new album had came out, uh, which is weird. Like he should have been trying to market most of some of the stuff, um, from his newest album. I mean, yeah, yeah, you, but at this I mean, point, I'm sure nobody fucking knows it, and that's the problem. Well, they they've been they've been advertising it all last week, and he got like two singles out. So it's it's not like people don't know that uh, his album was out. And then he was just like, I well, didn't know. well, he was on the radio on, on Southern Net, uh, like pop radio stations or, um, well, I know a lot of radio stations around here. Um, I Heart Radio is like connected with all of them mm-hmm. here in the Chicago area. And they were just like, yeah, if you download the, this, the app, uh, you'd be able to uh, check out my album. 
uh, for free and stuff like that. So they were, they been promoting it, but they were just like, when it actually came time to, uh, to, to do it, it was just like, well, you I guess he did like two songs that's out right now. And then everything else has been from his first and second album. And I think Birdie anything for the 2020. And then he did the troll soundtrack and then a Prince tribute. And it was just like, Okay, you have enough hits on your albums to even do a medley. And I think because him not having the rest of NSYNC and uh Jenna Jackson, they were they everybody was just like, No, nah, this is this wasn't good. So they were they were trashing it. Uh but like I said, I didn't watch it, so Honestly I think the last time I enjoyed a Super Bowl halftime show was when Prince was on. Yeah, uh Yahoo like that did, was a fucking performance. Uh, Yahoo did uh, uh, did a list like, of it ranked and, the all time greatest yeah, halftime shows, and he was like number one. Fucking better be. I didn't watch the Prince one. I didn't. Even, I didn't even remember oh, that dude, Prince did. Go, uh, go fucking YouTube it. The Prince one was phenomenal. But what year was it though? I don't even remember anymore. I'm I just know it was it awesome. And the world is a sadder place because that man is dead. Him and his, what I can only imagine is just he lounges around in a purple velour track suit. <laughs> I, when I heard that he passed away, that was the most oddest thing. I'm like, wait, he was just coming up with an album. What the heck is he dead for? In fact, he just did a concert. Yeah, it doesn't stop anybody from dying. Nope. So, anyways. Eddie, what in the flying fuck nuts have you been playing? Well, um, I installed Monster Hunter World for PS4 and have not started it yet. Uh, but Switch, I uh, on you the mean last... uh, Medieval Fantasy Star Online? Wow. <laughs> uh, no, that's no, that's not true. It, there's a better description for it. Uh, don't get me started on Fantasy Star Online. I really want to see how that does in Japan when 2 comes out. I really want to see how it does in the fucking states, aka bring it to the goddamn states, you twat. We have to watch what we have to see what happens in Japan first. I don't have to anything. I fucking want it. You're not going We've to get it. We promised yet. Blue Burst getting an English version Look, for like a We got decade too much other ever. stuff that we got to worry about for games. Okay? We're still trying to figure out what the next Nintendo Direct is. We tried to get that Metroid Prime look for a set. That's not <laughs> happening till E3. Let it go. No, the next Nintendo Direct needs to be uh, Fantasy Star Online 2 coming to the States. Well, shoot, we still got to get No, the... what is it? Fantasy Star Online Cloud 2, I think it is? Because Fantasy Star Online 2 was the... It's something there like that. Episode but... 2, and then there was Episode 3, which was the, the weird, like, cardboard game thing. But see, th- that's what... The... I gotta look at the episode uh, series because I'm just like, why did they call it episodes? I thought it was just like, uh, uh, Fantasy Star Online, Fantasy Star Online Two, and then three was the card battle. Like that's I, basically what it was, but instead of just saying one, two, and three, it was episode one, episode two, episode three. But you know what? They never called the first one episode. I think well, I think what yeah they didn't, didn't start go. calling it episode I think until three. the GameCube one where it came packed episode one and episode two together on the GameCube okay because three was the car uh, yeah and I think that I think it was supposed to stand for something but uh, it did and I don't remember what it was and I don't particularly care like it wasn't bad I just didn't give a shit because I was busy playing. PSO on my GameCube Mm -hmm. online, and that's what I wanted more of. Yeah, and Uh, then they did whatever the fuck they did with Episode (laughs) Three. Well, uh, for Switch, Grace for Explosion Machine uh, on the Final World. uh, Just got to get those last nine stages. Uh, I actually uh, everything is unlocked majority for the for the first three planets like even the work mm-hmm. so i just gotta finish like the last nine and then i'm finished with that game yeah that last that last uh the warp one on uh the third planet is a fucking bitch you know what 
it Dude, could I had be, a bear of a time with that. It could be. It took a. It takes a while. But I just like I kind of stayed like almost in one place and let them come to me. It's just like dodge left and right and just like kill. I tried everything with that and kept getting my ass kicked. Shoot, that uh, the, I st- I'm starting to use like the missiles more, and the and the yeah. dash is. No, the missiles are great when you get the right configuration. Yeah, I mean it, it's because like I'm so used to using the sword. To like make a big circle, like so I can have clear space. The sword's great when you're getting swarmed on all sides. Yeah, and see, and the, that's the what missiles I are great me. when you got a whole herd of them coming at you from one direction. Yeah, yeah, because I like I don't even like really use the sniper beam unless I get unless I got like time to use it. Like the, the, the sniper's good space. for one thing and one thing only, and that's just for clearing out like the. The uh-huh. damaged sponge enemies. That's yeah. it. That's all it's designed for. That game is literally all about right tool for the right job. Yes, and dodgy now. <laughs> uh, yeah. But uh, uh, Lost Sphere, I've been playing Xenoblade Chronicles 2. How uh, is Lost Sphere? It's getting good. It's, it's really getting good. It's, it's, uh, I've heard a whole lot of meh on it, and it's, it's, it really kind of put me off it. I think it's because of... Uh, it feels like I am set sooner, and the some of the stuff that they fixed in the, uh, problems that they had in that game, they they fixed in this one. Uh, but it's it's kind of weird because you don't really get a. It feels like you don't really get a chance to like grind and level level up. It's just like you get to an area, then there's a cutscene, and uh, then but you gotta fight. Does it really need the grinding though? Like, are yeah, you ever grossly you kind of, underpowered? I mean. Yeah, you kind of do need to, uh, because of not being able because of other parts of the uh world is taken out. You gotta kind of fight a boss to get that uh memory back to get that part of the town so you can get your uh get some upgrades and stuff. And if you're not powered up or positioned well, you could end up dying and stuff if you don't have enough money bought from for like uh. Um, to like you know, like Phoenix Downs and stuff like that, um, to get you back up. So your mom I mean, went Phoenix down on me. <laughs> oh wow! <laughs> uh, but uh, that's uh, that's what I've been playing for uh, kind of for a Switch. Um, but I did pick up Icono Class for PS4. Yeah, it is a must. Really? I think definitely you would like it. It's a mix of Shante, Metal Slug, and Metroid put together. And it's not it's it's more Metroid as in you getting new powers uh to find different areas with some good comedy so and it's, good writing. It's it's about like the mobility upgrades. Yeah thing about it is is that you don't get no upgrade for your energy Mm. so um pretty much where your energy is at that's it that's what you whatever you start off with the game and your energy is what you always will have now there is uh you can kind of get up some materials and go to a crafting station and get something that uh, will stop you from taking one bit of damage, but it doesn't. Uh, once it is used up, then it starts taking off more energy and stuff. Um, I'm playing it on normal right now. Uh, there is no uh, uh, ducking, uh, like like a morph ball. I mean, uh, you can't. You can't. So there, duck. There's like no crouch. There's no. Yeah, you can't crouch. Get one pile big. Uh. Yeah, because you, you could crouch and walk through tiny holes and stuff. You could do that, uh, but you can't, like, duck and drop a bomb and then move out the way. Or you can't do none of that. Uh, your gun that you kind of have has ends up having different powers. So uh, you'll have, like, a normal stun gun, and then when you charge it up, you'll have a bigger a bigger shot, but it has a cooldown time on it. Uh and it really is a great game. Now, I will say that it's a game that I don't see come to Nintendo Switch 
but in the future if someone wants to it, it's like the axiom verge kind of thing if someone wants to help this person <clears throat> port it to the switch like a company and stuff that would be cool uh it is twenty dollars on PS4. It really is good, and it deals with uh, it deals with religion and some other things. Um, oh, so it's a comedy. It has some it has some comedic elements in it. I know you're trying to make a joke about the religious stuff, but there yeah, is com- huh? but there is but there is comedy. It deals with uh, religion as in uh they use it as another reason to do what they do uh to be destructive so um it's so more... it's 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 uh fairly faithful to the source material of religion then um well not really i don't know i'm pretty sure anybody that was killed in the crusades might argue with you well that's that's completely different like this one don't have anything to do like with crusades and stuff like that um, I'm being facetious here, sort I of. I, I, you know, when it comes to me with religion and you, before I come back down there and poke you back in your stomach. Yeah. After I get you some chicken and we play like a, with the Metroid games, but you still need to do that recap for the other games. Uh, we did all of them. No, we did not. Yes, we did. No, we didn't. We did I because, swear to Christ, we did. No, because if we, I have to go back through and listen through shit so I can point it out to you, I'm going to be right. really mad. And we were supposed because we didn't do, uh, we didn't go all the way to uh, the future games. Like we stopped at Metroid Prime. I we went we through everything Prime. that was out. I swear to God. Right, which but means we the touch- only thing we have we didn't do at that point was Samus Returns because it wasn't out. Well, yeah, but we didn't even do Return of Samus. Yeah, we did. No, we didn't. We did the console stuff. We did all of it. Like I did everything all of in it. order. No, we didn't do all uh, of it because we didn't I'm, do other. Well, exactly. We had to go back and talk about it because there's some Metroid games that we didn't go through that that we didn't have a full discussion of. But we did I have a discussion of, like, the console ones. I swear to you, I'm going to go back through and I'm going to find it. And I'm going to be like, here, see all of it. Would you do that? Would you get strength to do that? <laughs> yeah, no kidding. Because let me tell you this week. Let me tell you what I played this week. I played, um, let's see, what's what's an apt... Uh, I played Super Dental Work today, uh, this week. Super Dental RPG. <laughs> yeah, that's that's the one. Motherfucker, dude. Monday, Monday sucked so much ass. I I, I was already not feeling great on Monday, and uh, I, I came home to lay out on the inversion table, try and get my back straightened out, mm-hmm. and. Uh, Went upstairs to go get some food before I went back to work. Took a bite of something, and holy shit, dude, my mouth lights up like a fucking Christmas tree. So I go to the walk-in dentist to find out, like, seriously, what the fuck is going on here? And they're like, "Uh, you better strap in. You're getting a pair of root canals today. I'm like, oh, fuck me running. But I spent about an hour and a half in the waiting room with my Switch, so I sat and played some stuff for a while while I was in excruciating pain. Uh, I spent some time on Monday. Uh, I went back and I started fiddling around with um, uh, Tiny Barbarian again, actually. Ooh, nice. um, made a little bit more progress on that. That still continues to kick my ass because it is just fucking beautifully brutal. Do uh, uh, uh... I I think the point that I left with playing Master because I bought Blast Master Zero, the point that I left it on your Switch is now where I'm at on my Switch. So now yeah. I got to continue on that because uh, I still need to start it'll do. Uh, speaking of Nicholas games, yeah, but yeah, I mean I I loved going back to Tiny Barbarian. Like mm-hmm. I said, it it still kicks my ass just mercilessly, but not unfairly. Yes. I, I will give it that. That game is brutal, but it is not unfair in just, any way, shape, or form. Why is it every time I just see that box art, I keep thinking of Joe and Mac? 
<laughs> it, it it is a little reminiscent of that. I could totally fucking see that. Actually, oh, that's the uh, Nicholas. That's legit. The, if Nicholas could get the rights to that game and just like redo it for Switch, I'll be like, yes, you guys got already got the artwork to do it. <laughs> so, but I, I did make some actual progress on that. I got through another section or two. I'm still stuck in the same chapter, but um, and God the. Honestly, my favorite thing about playing that game anymore is just listening to the music. Mm -hmm. That music is so fucking good. Oh, my God. Seri I, I know it's a little salty, but seriously, go buy the soundtrack for that thing. Um, do, they, it's, do they have it available to buy? Yeah, it's on. Uh, it's either Bandcamp or SoundCloud somewhere. Like I said, I, I know the, the price on it's a little salty, but... Mm -hmm. Like, no shit, there is just hours and hours of music in that soundtrack, especially wonder, for the DX version. It's like 37 fucking tracks. I wonder if... Like, it is long. I wonder if now, like, video games now, like, indie games are, like, putting out soundtracks more when, they get, like, when the game releases. It's, it's kind of come, come a, a little bit prevalent because I don't know if, if Nicholas has done it with all of their games yet. All the games that that has been released, but uh, a lot of people are like digging a lot of the indie soundtracks. Well, I know uh, the the first run of uh, Cave Story for the Switch mm -hmm. came with like the soundtrack on a mini disc, so it would fit inside the Switch case. But I mean, there was at least like an actual physical hard copy of the soundtrack in the box. Oh, nice! So. But, you know, I mean, obviously it means you can't, you know, play it in a vacuum load, which means no putting it in your car stereo. But, oh, no. you know, stick it in your, la you know, stick it in your PC and rip it to an MP3. Or but in any case, CD. In yeah, CD in you know, I mean, at this point, I've got two copies of the soundtrack for Axiom Verge between the PC version that I bought in that uh -huh. beautiful Steelbook case and the, uh, the Switch version, the... Uh, um, the special edition came with a, a copy of the soundtrack as well. Yeah. So I've got two, co two different copies of that, which, um, you know, it's, it's a phenomenal soundtrack. It really is. Yeah, that, that, um, that switch version, like, uh, brought in a lot of money. Like a lot of picked that version, that version. Up. Oh, I, I don't yeah. doubt it. I, I've got, I had a, you know, I've got a friend that was specifically waiting for the multiverse edition to uh, come out to to buy into it again. Yeah, and a lot um, of people pick that pick that version up the, the multi one, the multi one. Yeah, the multiverse. Yeah, um, I mean, it's it's a nice package. It really is. I will say, and I, I've said it before, and I'll say it again because I I've kind of got an itching to go back and rewatch it. But mm. I I was actually really disappointed with the uh the making of part of the documentary that was in there but that being said i i felt it was totally made up for by the uh, let's play that was on the uh blu-ray on there um the the let's play through uh the game just totally picked up had everything that i wanted the making of to yeah. have in it and didn't um the the let's play and i I'm sure I've touched on this when it first came out, but the let's play has some really cool stuff. Like you hear a lot of the, um, like the lore that Tom wrote for the game yeah. that never actually made it into the game, but it, it exists somewhere like either in his head or in a notebook somewhere. And so knowing this, you know, playing through the game, suddenly becomes a richer experience because you know this cool little shit about the game that you know you don't get by just playing the game but it it's relevant to the universe that you're in and that's fucking cool i know people have been making there's like on youtube there's like theories of the story and like part of his con uh, conclusion which i think is cool that people yeah have... i mean he he touched on most of that like, there's one piece in particular that there's been a bunch of speculation about that he wouldn't confirm. Mm 
mm-hmm. uh, the the details behind it, and that's the uh, the wheelchair. Um, but a lot of the rest of it, you know, including the ending, he does uh, speak to. So, you know, for for anybody that really wants a, a definitive answer on a lot of the uh, the speculative stuff, mm-hmm. uh, watch watch the Let's Play that's in the Multiverse Edition. I wonder if if he really wants to do a uh, part two. I I don't know that it needs it honestly. Like I I'd be I, interested to see what else I, he does. I, but... I think the way that he left it, I I think that's that's probably going to be a discussion we'll have one day. It's just like when people leave a game somewhat open ended. But it's just better to give a. I feel like, to me personally, I feel like give me a conclusion, and let that clu- there, conclusion. There let is, me... like, if you watch that let's play, mm-hmm. what you're thinking is open ended. When you hear it laid out from him, it's way more of a closed loop than you think. Like there is a a logical conclusion there that just closes the loop completely. Well, some people think that uh, don't really want to spoil it. And some people think that the main character is going to be is trying to do something else to see the world again. So uh, he is, but if you if you get the appropriate ending, mm-hmm. that loop closes. Okay. So. so because there there is a deeper ending that will close that loop. So, yes, that's when you do his discussion. It. Yeah, I mean, like, like I said, it's it's there in the game. Like, if you get the the correct ending, you will see that loop close. Mm-hmm. It's it's well, it is not as open ended as you think. I, I think for some, I think for some games, I I just like a final conclusion to them. It's there. Uh, I mean, well, I mean, I mean, just not not speaking about Axiom Verge, but just in games in general, because it's just like uh, sometimes a series series is not guaranteed to get a sequel. So yeah. we don't know if there's going to be a, a actual conclusion at the end of the game, or if it's going to be left open to be promised a sequel. It's never, it's never guaranteed because a Here's, lot, of, don't a lot of don't forget during a, a lot of the, uh, probably even with the GameCube and PS2 days, like definitely with the 360 and PS3 and even Wii days, is that you'll get a game, you'll beat it, and it was left open for a sequel to happen, and the sequel never happened because that studio got closed or something. Advent Rising, prime example, and that happened a lot to to some games. Just be like, no, I'm like. I I'm like I I need a conclusion to this, uh, or I need some stuff figured out. You know, this actually happened with to me personally with Metroid Other M, and I know it kind of some of it got didn't get fun didn't get like no there there was explored. a resolution to everything in that game. You just had to work some of it out because it didn't spell all of it out. Well, it it didn't spell all of it out, but. But because of Metroid Other M and how Metroid Fusion kind of connects each other during that time. That's the thing. The two of them really don't connect. But the, like, re- but the way that it was released. Chronologically, they're you know, one after the other. But in terms of content, they don't really connect other than the fact that there's... Uh, one of the bosses from Fusion in Other M, which is a little ass backwards because it's like, wait a minute, you got introduced here. Why are you even here? But well, it, and don't, it's the way that it was because I think Other M was out before Fusion. I think, or is it vice no, versa? No, Fusion was out long before Other M. Okay, I thought because I thought they came out in the same year. Oh hell no, dude! Fusion was like early two thousands, and then other. Then I wonder why did it? Then why did it? Was it a re-release or something? Me, no. meaning, meaning that people because people started talking about Fusion again, and or maybe it was just me playing it again. 
Uh, I'm thinking it's just you. You want to you want to know? Uh, that's why. I, that's why it's because Fusion was on Wii U. And yeah, even though, it, even though yeah, Metro, it got, even it though, hit virtual console, right? And even though Metro of the M out was on Wii. I think once it dropped on uh once it dropped on Wii U uh virtual console, that's when to me that that connection and people started discussing it started happening. So but that's like like I said, there there's really no tangible story connection between other M and Fusion. Mm-hmm. It's just it's not there. It was just so. that Fusion Fusion just chronologically happened to be the next game in the series. And then that's where cuz I guess Fusion is the current one. It's like the like actual Fusion last. is Yep. And then uh honestly is like further... Samus Returns has a better connection to Fusion than other M does. Uh Return of Samus or Samus Returns? The Samus remake, Returns. The remake. Yeah. Mm. The 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 one that came out just this past September, Samus Returns, has a has a stronger connection to uh, to Fusion than other M. See, I find that weird. No, because uh, again, Samus Returns takes place on SR388 and Fusion takes place on the uh, BSL station that's orbiting SR388. I'm, I'm because thinking, SR388 is where the X parasites came from, but uh, her commander is still alive. Except during uh-huh. Simmons' return. Yeah, at that point, yes. Uh, Malkovich dies in other app. Oh yeah, because he he shuts it off, and that's why Fu- and that's why the connection to Fusion comes in. Was because of that part. Yeah, I mean, that, and, and even that—that's not that important, honestly. It just that was such a waste of everything. Well, it was. I think it was because of we never, like, I, like we talked before that we never got a back story to Samus, like a real, a real detailed backstory. Because it was. Just oh, like there was after, plenty of it. You well, gotta dig for it in the in the mangas, but yeah, it's well, there. Well, even the, with the mangas, that all of that changed, uh, because the manga or the one that was in Nintendo Power, kind of led to the beginning of Metroid, and then somehow they tried to move Super Metroid into it. But Return of Samus had happened. and then it was like Super Metroid, and I think when Super Metroid came, they were trying to give it a comic. Yeah. Anyways, so aside from uh, playing Tiny Barbarian, since we've been talking about it, actually, uh, I also spent some of the time in the waiting room uh, trolling around through uh, Axiom Verge, um, just not to accomplish anything other than I was just kind of wandering through trying to find uh, some of the secret world rooms Mm -hmm. because I I shit you not. And it's it super pisses me off now. when I was playing through it, uh, when it first hit Switch, um, I found one of the secret world rooms, but I didn't realize that's what the fuck it was at the time, and I thought I had a bad connection on my HDMI cable. Wow. <laughs> because the the giveaway that you're in one of the rooms that has one of the sec- uh, an access to a secret world, because the, the secret worlds will randomly... Uh, spawn in different areas every time you boot up a new game Mm -hmm. um is that you'll see like some you'll see like scan lines on the uh on the screen like it's a c you know like you're looking at an old crt tv and so i didn't realize that's what was going on at the time and so i'm sitting there fucking with my hdmi cable trying to fix it not realizing that oh hey um, I'm at a cool place and I should totally look for the cool thing. So I've been wandering around again, trying to remember where the fuck I saw it. And now I can't remember. So I'm just it's, wandering. 
did you get a gun? Are you supposed to get a super gun, a special gun? Yeah, there, there's like one of five different uh, weapons that crop up uh, randomly in the secret world. Um, and it's it's always something ridiculously overpowered. So, um, oh, that's one of the other cool things, too, that was in the Let's Play, um, is that uh, Tom made mention of something that apparently some people had been trying to figure out the, uh, the rhyme and reason behind that, uh, in one of the sequences where, uh, trace is hallucinating and one of the guns, uh, gets like overpowered, like super bizarre, uh -huh. um, that there is, there is actually a, uh, a rhyme and reason to, uh, which gun it's dependent on, what position uh or the uh the weapons are in so it's it's always going to be the weapon and i think in like the the sixth position so depending on what order you find the weapons yeah. determines which one gets like super powered for that hallucination scene oh, so wow. there's a there's a nifty fun fact for you so uh. But uh, again, apparently Tom was saying that he'd, he'd done some looking and apparently nobody had managed to figure out the rhyme and reason behind it. There, There is an actual intentional, you know, this is how to determine which one will be all wonky. But that's, but that's for the special guns. That's not the guns. That no, you... no, 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 no. There's, there's a section of the game where Trace is hallucinating. And oh, whatever okay. weapon you have in the sixth position, that weapon gets overpowered. Okay, because I was just, just thinking for of, that scene. Because I was just thinking of is it during the way that you get the guns during a linear fashion during the story? Right, because you you won't depending on how you go about it, you may not necessarily find. You know, you can find different guns and you can pick them up in different orders. Yeah. So, um, but there, there's also a, uh, a very intentional reference to, uh, the original Pokemon in Axiom Verge. Uh, one of the, uh, enemies when you glitch it is intentionally made to look like missing. No. Oh, wow. I, and I remember looking at going, that kind of reminds me of, and I was watching it and he, he made mention of like, Ah, no shit, I was right. That's cool. So, because uh, again, it's it's a reference to you know glitching games, and so you know missing no was a glitch in the original Pokemon, and the the glitched version of that and that particular enemy is made to look like missing no, which was a glitch. So I thought that was kind of neat. So, like I said, mad props to the Let's Play because that thing was totally worth it. Is Even it the, if a uh, whole game, they go through pretty. There, there's a few snippets that I think they cut out, but yeah, for the most part, they're going to go through. They went through almost all of it. Okay. So uh, that was fucking cool. It, it it totally makes it worth the buy. Honestly, it does. Um. So I mean, if you can still get your hands on a copy of the multiverse edition, do it. It's it's worth it for the uh, for the let's play. Not to mention, if you don't already have a copy of the soundtrack, the soundtrack is just Good. fucking spectacular. I still haven't um, beat it on PS4. I haven't beaten it yet. But um, what else have I been playing? I've been playing the uh, the Switch port of SteamWorld Dig, uh, the original. Um, mm -hmm. I'm still perfectly happy to go back to it, but I'm... I still feel like I like it the best on my 3DS. Um, the Switch port makes uh, a couple of modifications. Uh, one of which I like is that you can see how many of a particular ore you can stack in an inventory slot on the Switch version. Uh -huh. The trade-off, though, is that the map is super zoomed out and it, it makes it far less useful. Like, honestly, half the time I'm playing on my 3DS... I'm playing SteamWorld Dig, watching the map, and not the actual action screen. <laughs> at the top. Just because I know what's going on just by looking at the map. So, um, 
but I, I can't do that on the Switch version because it's so pulled out because it's relegated just to a little panel in the corner versus having a whole screen dedicated. Um, uh, overall, it's still worth it. Uh, that being said, I, I need to vent on a, a SteamWorld issue here. Um, just announced SteamWorld Dig 2 is getting a hard copy release on Switch coming this spring, uh, which, hooray, that's that's well and good. But seriously, given the size of that game, the size of the original, and the size of Heist, there is no way in fucking hell they could not put all three of those on an anthology and on a single cartridge. There is no way. Why not? Seriously, why could... They're they're putting out SteamWorld Dig 2 hard copy by itself. Why the fuck did you not put all three games on one cartridge? Probably because uh, they were planning to do a physical, and they were shocked by the sales. You like they uh, they pretty it think, irritates me. But they already had plans to do World and Heist as physical. Yeah, so but at this they point, they just were just put all three on a single cartridge. It, it would have been nice, but I think partly because they already had the cartridge stuff in production for the other two, and because uh, of the sales are being good for uh. Steve I still haven't too. seen the official announcement for uh, Dig and Heist getting hard copies on Switch. I thought they mentioned it. I thought you. I they may have, and I missed it, but I I don't remember seeing it. Um, but that's that's my personal vent on that is that really should have just been a complete anthology um i've also put some more time into uh slain back from hell um i will say playing more of it i'm feeling better about it Mm -hmm. i still think that visually it's it's a little muddy um that being said I'm I'm feeling a little better about the format. The format feels a little more like old, like original Castlevania. It's it's fucking linear. It is. There is no ex- it is just plow till you get to the next save point. Um that being said, it's it's a little on the punishing side. It's not like tiny barbarian bad, but um it's it's a little on the punishing side. But the uh, the respawn is super quick. It gets you right back in the action. And I I will say I do feel at times like I am dying unfairly. But mm-hmm. that that could just be me and the game not quite gelling. But we're we're getting closer. So you know, there's that. Um, the also, uh, I get to you, little little gem that i picked up that i've been starting to put bits and pieces of time into is uh i've been working a little bit on uh inversus uh or inversus deluxe um on switch and it is a clever little fucking game it's it's definitely a solid challenge but the the mechanics of the game are fantastic and I'm, i'm gonna go super old school reference here it reminds me a lot of Jez Ball, like old Windows 95 Jez Ball. I've never heard of it. Look it up. It's That's what it reminds me of. Um, I know the comparison's not dead on. It's just that's what springs to mind for me when I'm playing this. It's like if it feels like if Jez Ball was a shooter. Um, but... And I, I can't tell you how much time I wasted playing Jez Ball way back in the day. Well, yeah, but, I wasn't doing any PC gaming, so that's probably why at that time. So. But no, it's it's a clever little game. It's pretty nifty. I mean, it's not super expensive. It's it's definitely worth the pickup. Um, also put a little bit of time into I I went on a buying binge. I think I made mention uh, a couple weeks ago. Uh, I, I had a fuck ton of credit on uh, eShop. And uh, I picked up uh, the other uh, Tomorrow Corp games uh, that I hadn't already gotten. Um, and I, I started putting some time into one of them. I started playing a little bit of uh, Little Inferno. Mm-hmm. And it is the stupidest thing. It really, like, seriously, it's just like, 
here's a game, light some stuff on fire. That that it's it's mildly deeper than that, but not by much. It's seriously just here. Burn stuff. Burn more stuff. Oh, you're out of stuff to burn? Buy some more stuff and then burn it. It'll give you more money so you can buy stuff to burn. So it's it's adorable and it's weird. And I I, I, I realized that I, I looked at the clock and I realized I'd been playing it for like an hour and a half. Mm-hmm. I'm like, what am I doing with my life? Fire. Like I need to stop this right now. This is like I, I should not have wasted this much time on what amounts to an interactive screensaver. But you was having fun. So I, I was. Like I, I was still just right at the tail end of my illness and so I I was still a little out of it and mm-hmm. <laughs> I just for some reason, my brain zoned out on fire, fire, touch thing to light on fire. Fire. So there you go, by the way, there, there's a switch game that uses the touch screen is a little inferno. It can be played without, but it, it honestly works best if you just play it in handheld with the touch screen. So I'll, I'll put that out there for you. Um, in any case, uh, also put a little more time into rocket league on switch i'm still pissed that it's 40 bucks but yes i bought it anyways because I, the the collector in me won out because i still want my hard copy of something that will always win out which means i am going to end up double dipping in on uh snipper clips at least it's not like the full double dip because I haven't bought the expansion pack for it wow. yet. And I, want it. um, but I, I will end up getting snipper clips and I will end up, God damn it. I will end up double dipping on Steamworld world two. That, that might be the thing that gets me to play it again. I hate Cause double otherwise dip. Did you I'm buy really, it? yeah. <laughs> I, yeah. Cause I, I'm really not compelled at the moment to go back and play it a second time right now. But I, I'm thinking that maybe having a hard copy will be the uh, the impetus that gets me to play it a second time. Um, also, got super excited last week. I actually got to sit down and play through a whole fucking game front to back. Which one? Um, I, I managed to blitz my way through The Mummy Demastered. And I love it. Uh. I had to finish I, it. I actually, it's I had so to, good. Yeah, I had to. I have to redo everything because the memory card that it was, was on corrupted. So Ouch. I had to. Yeah, so I had to take that out. Uh, I buy a whole new memory card. So I redownloaded the game. I just got to start it back from the beginning. Um, only, if it makes you feel any better, I, I can at least speak to the fact that you can sit down, you can finish it in a day. I know because I've done it. Uh, well, I see. I was at the dinosaur, the dinosaur boss. I was kept. I keep getting my tail kicked by him. Yeah, I want to say it's about halfway, three quarters. So, not um, the finished game. Yeah, the dinosaur boss is the first one. Or no, no, uh, no. You're right. He was the first one. So you were only about a quarter second, of the way. In. He's the second one because I think there was like a spider one or something. It was like yeah, the first that's time. right. The spider was first, then the dinosaur. So yeah, you were at about the halfway mark. Damn, how many bosses so, does this game have? Not many. Uh, I think yeah. There's not a lot. I mean, it's it's a Metroidvania. Think back to Super Metroid. Seriously, yeah. there was like four mini bosses, and then the end. So you know, but that being said, I had a lot of fun with it. Um. I, I will say personal pain point, though, I, I don't know if I, I'd even call it a knock on the game, but it, it's just for me because I wanted to enjoy it and it made it feel a little more stressful was the fact that this game will seriously keep you like on the edge of dying constantly. Yeah. Like you'll hit save points and it will not refill health. 
Like the only time your health gets refilled is when you pick up an energy pack and then you'll go out and you'll start playing again. And then you'll find yourself constantly hovering like two health packs above death for the whole fucking game. Yeah. And it, 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 it really rogue, lays on the anxiety. It's that rogue mentality. So, but it, it's solid. It's manageable. I will, I really, I give them all kinds of credit. I love the way they handled player death because they specifically tell you that you just lost a, a, a soldier in combat and that going back in from the last save point, you are now playing as a different soldier because the one that died is now undead and possessed and you've got to go kill him to get your shit back. Yeah, that's the rogue. That's the rogue like series. And, and it makes sense. If you dig about it's it, it's like cool. I liked it. That was neat. Like it's not it, you're right. It has a minor um it it gives it a minor influence from the the roguelike genre, yeah. but it, I mean, it's it, it's, not it's, it's just that part. It's just that death part. Yeah, that's it. That's the only component, and that was enough for me for this game. But I, I had a super fun time playing it. I really did. Um, I wish it was a little less chatty, but at least it wasn't as bad as SteamWorld Dig 2. God, that game talked too fucking much. And You know, um, I think from what I play of, of the Mummy D Master, it doesn't seem chatty. It's not super chatty, but I could have stood for it to be less chatty than it was. It's weird that the tutorial stuff that, like, you already did something, didn't explain to you afterwards. I'm just like, this is the Grand Theft Auto Five mistake. Like, you are, it gives you a mission to fly, and then you do the mission, and then it wants to teach you on how to fly. I'm like, I already did this. <laughs> <laughs> like, what backward stuff did y'all put in this game? Yeah. So... Uh, in any case, um, but yeah, Mummy Demastered, fantastic. So here's where I'm going to catch a bunch of shit. Um, and I already caught a fair bit of, actually, believe it or not, I, I don't think I caught as much of it as I expected when I posted it online. Um, but uh, I, I caved on Corey's recommendation. And um, I, I'm going to say I'm not real thrilled with it yet. But yes, I've yes. I've been playing a little bit of Celeste, and I am I'm serious. I am not in love here. Like I I'm sure that everybody that loved it, you know, got something out of it, and that's great. The bit that I've played of it so far, like I've played maybe an hour, hour and a half of it, and I am just I'm not in love. Like it. Part of me is sitting here going, I could probably enjoy it more if I turned on the cripple mode. Mm -hmm. But part of me wants to just experience it the way that it's intended to be experienced. But in doing so, I'm not having fun. The I'm just I'm retrials of dying so much or figuring out the puzzles. I'm just I'm not in love with the fact that they there are mechanics that are in here that are not explained that should be. Like, I'm at a part where I'm fairly certain I think I know what the fuck to do, but I'm either not nailing it or I am just wrong. But mm -hmm. the thing is, at this point, I don't fucking know because they don't tell you. And it's like I'm just beating my head on a wall every time I turn it on. And I'm right back at that spot again, going, either I'm doing it wrong, or I'm doing it right, but I'm just not doing it well enough. And I don't know, and that fucking irritates the piss out of me. So, it's just, at this point, personal preference. I, it, so, I, I, I don't know what to do with it. Uh, it. It's here, I own it, it's not like I'm going to get my money back on it, but... At this point, so far, I'm not in love. That being said, I'm, uh, I, I've not given up on it, and I'm sure I will go back to it. But for right now, I just, I had to put it down and walk away. That's, that's so I, I, I may, you know, if I put it down and I go back to it in a month with like fresh eyes, I might 
it, it might finally click with me, but so, but that's that's where I'm at at the moment with uh, with Celeste. So, uh, in, in regards to that, you can send all your hate mail to uh, you. You can tweet that to us at uh, World One Underscore One Podcast on Twitter, and you can tell us how much uh, I'm wrong because I don't love Celeste. So, um, she was the first perfect ten for some places, and Shadow the Colossus is the second. So, that's kind of interesting, actually. Two Actually, perfect. at this point, IGN's doled out three perfect tens on Switch, and uh, Celeste was one of them. Yeah. Uh, obviously, Breath of the Wild picked up the first one, and then the second one went to uh, Odyssey, which um, I, I'm still going to disagree with Odyssey and say that I can see the appeal, but I don't think it's a ten. I can see why I got a ten. I mean, uh, but uh, again, it's uh, personal. Yeah, and that's the other thing, too, is that when it comes to a, a perfect score, uh, you know, any good review outlet will tell you that it's not saying that the game's perfect, but that the person that played it mm -hmm. could not begin to recommend it enough. Like, yes, it will still have faults, but as an overall piece of art, it stands as a masterpiece. Right. So, but in, in any case, um, I'm thinking that's most of what I've played this week. Well, or since the last time we talked. Um, but yeah, I've, I've actually, I've gotten some, some game time in and it's, it's been uh, a nice change of pace. Granted, I, I had to go get some teeth drilled to, you know, block out some time for uh, a few things, but you know, what are you going to do? It's it's only a three thousand uh, dollar, you know, block of time. So fuck it. What's three thousand dollars, right? Who who doesn't have that shit laying around? Right. So, anyways, so this is your friendly reminder: brush your teeth twice a day and after every meal. Don't forget to floss. Yep. So, uh, yeah, um. News-wise, I, I can't think of anything, honestly, that really jumped. No, I take that back. There was some new stuff since the last time we talked, and I had to think about it for a minute here. Um, we did get the announcement, finally, that uh, the the online paid network for Switch is finally coming in September. Yes. Uh, you know, it's, it's only a year late, but um, I, I suspect that come E3 we are going to find out what what major online game they're they're going to you know attach to that release because it'd there's be, got to be something to it'd come be with mostly it, sell it. Two, I think I I don't think Splatoon 2 is going to carry it. I think Splatoon 2 at this point is too far back in order to sell that. I, well, I think Splatoon 2 as in cuz like I think a lot of their free DLC stuff has came to it, come to an end. Um, but at this point, that's just saying that here's the game that you've been playing online for free for over a year, and if you want to keep playing it, because clearly we can provide you the service at mm -hmm. no charge, but now we're going to charge you for it. Pony up. But I mean, I, 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 I don't was, see that flying well. But I think that was the intent, like. They told people that like way even before Splatoon Two came out. Yeah, you but know, the thing so. is, at this point, with it being this far out from Splatoon Two, they've got to put something out at the same time to get that to to carry over and translate into subscription. And I, I can see one of two things happening at this point. Um, one. E3, they announced that uh, in September, you know, just a couple months later, that they're going to be dropping a uh, a Switch port of Smash Brothers from uh, Wii U 3DS. Uh, that somehow they're going to combine all the content from that because there there was some discrepancy in content, but the it we'll we'll call it a deluxe port and it'll have everything, um, including all the DLC and whatnot. Um, 
or I would say less likely, but still maybe possible, is that, uh, for lack of a better name at this point, uh, Pokemon Stars hit Switch. Uh, no. I, I, I still po- think it's way too early, but... The, the Pokemon it, Company would announce something like that, and I don't think Nintendo Nintendo would. Because it, it looks like... like the po- it looks like the Pokemon Company has kind of taken charge of like making major announcements uh, for for that for that uh, game or that series. That may be, but I mean, you you consider that you know that that got announced at you know Nintendo's E3 presentation. Yeah. But you know they they put but... them on the screen for it, but still, you know I I would venture to say that, but not for that. But that's it. They're gonna announce if, a release date at no, E3. No, the, that game won't get announced until next year. It, 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 no, and I, I, have, I think you're have, right. I do. Like, but a, that's... a game, a game that big to be on Nintendo's online thing that early, like in September. No, they want they. I think what's gonna happen is is that they want to get the kinks and updates and stuff out before they roll out with Pokemon because they're not going to leave something that they're not going to leave something this new that Nintendo hasn't really um really have like fleshed out and tried they want to get their feet wet with this this so, shit's a year behind it better be right as soon as it hits well yeah I mean even though it's, it's been delayed and, and everything they want to. They want to make sure that they get it right. And trying to have po- something big as Pokemon on a on a home console, like they're they're treating that as uh like a major major player. Like this is a 3ds series being moved to console for the first first time. As in, as in an RPG, not talking about the Colosseum games or the uh, Tetris okay. one or like all of those side games and stuff. Not talking about that. Like this oh, is I a know. major Main town for town, dungeon, Main like collecting and everything. Like they're they're yeah. treating this major, and the po- they won't. Nintendo wants the Pokemon Company to make sure that game is right, and yeah. they're like what they. I'm not saying it's happening. I'm just saying thinking it out in my mm-hmm. head it's like that is one of the only two things that could be big enough uh to drop along with the release of this service to get well, people to start buying i i don't i don't even think i think the price alone is what people's going was going to get it on it to the online i'm like 20 dollars that's that's the 40 dollars it 30 no it's 20 it's 20 for a whole year it's 20 dollars for a whole year but uh, even to? still at 20 bucks though the thing is is if i don't have a reason to play it to play online then, then i don't have pay, a reason to buy then, then you could pay four dollars if you want to or you don't have to pay you don't have to pay it at all if you're not going to do anything online with anybody that's you'll the still, thing you'll still they be want able... to sell the product which means you've which got to is, have a reason for people why, to buy it which is why when you do get it they're going to discounts extra extra discounts almost like ps plus and uh yeah like ps plus that's the extra discounts for any digital games that you buy um probably when youtube and stuff come along like there's gonna be some some benefits that you could get uh when you get it but there's gonna be some things that you still could do without having it so i mean for 20 for 20 dollars for a whole year compared to 60 dollars that playstation and xbox have to do and you're still having problems with connections and stuff like the how many times has PlayStation Network gone down? <laughs> how many times has Xbox Live gone down? Like you're paying sixty dollars for just Xbox Live to really like use YouTube and Hulu and stuff like that. Like no, because you can do all that without Live Gold. Well, yeah, but you have to have Live like Silver or something like that. Yeah, but that's free. Well, I mean that that's free, but you know, I I keep my subscription to Live Gold just for the free games. That's it. Well, yeah, and that's see, the I, only and, fucking thing. I and do it. and for people who want to do online gaming on the other two systems, like you're forced to have it. 
there's no there's yeah. no other way around it. If you really want to play Destiny or even Ghost Break kind of stuff like the Ubisoft games, you have to have live go. Yeah, because those right. how those games were designed. At least with Nint- like, at least with Nintendo's, like if, if if I don't have if I don't have online, if I'm next to you, I can still at least I can still do multiplayer because we're doing it local. Right but for all the online stuff, yeah, twenty dollars. That that's that's easy. You spend twenty dollars, dude. You spend twenty dollars in cigarettes and party plus more, and that's not good for you. Not anymore. Health. Not anymore, man. Chantex or Chantix. Medis is that the? Yeah, it's it's the quit thing. Ah, oh, okay. that's that's been ongoing for a while. I'll I'll give you details on that later. But okay. in any case, um, but yeah, I, I I'm just I'm looking at it going all the things that. I can think of aside from Smash Brothers mm-hmm. and Pokemon that would have been great to drop alongside the release of the the online network has already been out for you know months and months. Yeah. You know, Splatoon two, Mario Kart. You know these these are uh, Rocket League would have been a great one to drop alongside. You know, saying. Here's Rocket League. We know you want it on your Switch, and now you have it. And if you want to play online, you're going to pay us twenty bucks a year. And I think folks will be feel. I think it's easier to be like, oh, twenty dollars. That's nothing. Like people spend more twenty dollars in the month than they do for something that's only once a year. You know, like like twenty bucks. Like uh, you get twenty dollars uh, for a birthday gift and be like, well, I'm, at least I got high <laughs> functionality for a year. Oh, so I'm I'm staring at it and I completely spaced that I actually put some time into it. Um, I also picked up and I uh, I put a little bit of time into Morphite on the Switch, mm-hmm. and I was really hoping to love this game more than I do. It feels incomplete. Um. Like I'm, I'm all for the weird, like muted, flat art style. I'm okay with that, but fuck me, running this game just feels unfinished, unpolished, and that makes me sad. I just, I, I tried really hard to love it, but every time I played it, something about it just, like I would play it and I would go. This is neat, and then I would hit it, and then I would watch it do something. Going, that feels broken. Why is this broken? Like weird, glitchy, fucking voice work and sound stuff, and like things just don't seem to line up right. I just, I, I was, I wanted to love it more than I could. So, but you know, shit happens. I at least gave, you know, I, I, it pays you money, it takes chances, I gave it a fair shake. I don't know that it's something that I'm going to go back to finish. Uh, or even try. I, I may go back and try it again, mm-hmm. just knowing that I am no longer dying of the plague, and I now have a slightly high tolerance for some things that I didn't a month ago. <laughs> but, um, you know, I, 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 will freely admit that I do not have high hopes for my feelings uh, in regards to a return trip to Morphite, which makes me a little sad, but, you know, dumbs to breaks, they can't all be winners. True. It is true. So, but there, there it is all the same. So, you know, for, for anybody thinking about it, think about it really, really hard. Uh, I, I would recommend if you're giving it some consideration, watch a let's play. Like mm-hmm. seriously, watch somebody play that thing for an hour and decide if you could tolerate it. Because if you can tolerate it, you'll probably have some fun with it. I just it it's too unpolished for me, and I can put up with a lot of bullshit. Before saying I'm out. 
So, um, but you know, a for effort, I guess. Like, I, I, I'm sure there's a really good idea buried in there somewhere. Mm-hmm. I just don't know that I'm going to dig hard enough to find it. So, but you know, happens sometimes. But uh, I think that reasonably sums up everything that I've been playing. Um, other tidbits of news, we now know confirmed that Illumination Studios, uh, most recently well-known for their work on the Minions and the Despicable Me series, um, is uh, working with Nintendo and co-funded by Universal Studios, which everybody saw coming. Uh, that there is a new Mario movie in the works. Yay. It's a thing. It's happening. You all are just going to have to fucking live with it. Yay. So. I want to um, see it when it comes out. Yep. And in other fairly big kind of out of the blue, what the fuck did, you know, where did that come from news? Uh, Nintendo also announced way, way ahead of uh, the mark here. Um, that uh, Mario Kart is coming to cell phones because that's that's a thing now. It was so, going to happen, so we'll see. It, how it was in the future. Um, I am I'm not sure how I feel about this. Honestly, I'm uh, I'm a little torn here because I, I've already got Mario Kart on a perfectly mobile device called a Switch. And additionally, I, I really don't like playing games on my cell phone. Like, I'm sure a lot of people are going to fucking love it. You know, people that haven't dropped 300 bucks for a Switch to, to play Mario Kart 8 Deluxe. Um, you know, that's, that's going to be great for you. You're, you're going to get to get some Mario Kart loving. And that's, I'm, I'm super happy for you people, but. Like, I, I realized I was talking with uh, somebody the other day and, like, just play a game on your cell phone. And I looked at my cell phone and I realized I've got two games on there. I've got dots on there so I can hand it to my child and she can play with it and watch the pretty colors and pretty sounds. And I've got AM2R on my phone. And that's it. Like, I don't play stuff on my cell phone. If I'm going to play a game, I'm going to sit down with a dedicated gaming machine and play a fucking game. True. It is true. So. I'll wait for uh, more information on how the game looks. But. I mean, I'm, I'm, I'm curious to see how they handle it and see, you know, what the finished product looks like. Yes. I'm, if nothing else, I'm curious just to see it. But. I, I don't see myself playing it by any means. And I think this is for next year. I believe. It's it's for some time this fiscal year. Which, you know, for anybody that doesn't know, fiscal year does not mean, you know, January to December. Fiscal year runs from like April to March. So yeah. You know, it's it's your calendar year offset by about three months. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> because, you know, everybody is totally going to, you know, get excited about when something's out by the end of a fiscal year. So. Well, we'll see what they do when they show some gameplay. So. Well, that's salty. So here's another thing too. I'm I'm just browsing through the uh, the eShop, and uh, the Bayonetta games are up for pre-purchase because those are dropping on uh, the 16th of this month. Um, Bayonetta one comes in at a reasonable thirty dollars for individual purchase on eShop. Bayonetta two, fifty bucks. So. Brace yourselves for eighty dollars to get both games. No, it's if when you when you buy Bayonetta to the price for a three drops. Oh, the, you the, mean for, for Bayonetta the price one? For I'm sorry. One. Yeah, Bayonetta so one. So the price, price for drops. one drops to ten bucks. Yeah. Okay, so that's a little better. But the thing is, is they don't seem to actually indicate that anywhere on here. 
Well, it's if you buy Bayonetta one, then Bayonetta two price drops. Yeah, so but if, like I said, it'd be nice if they actually told you that somewhere because right now, it it's not listed on the actual shop. Right, because they they did where it their should be listed when they when they when they did the announcement, they uh, Nintendo put out the reveal on how the pricing system would work. So, so that when um, you, if you buy one, you'll get the other one at a cheaper price. Yeah, but some other stuff that's coming up though that uh, you, you you find folks should be getting excited about. Um, you know, it, it kind of fell off the radar, and then it's it's a little back on the radar. But uh, Payday Two is finally coming out at the end of the month. Um, it's it's one of those things that did really fairly well on PC, and it's. It's great fun if you have a couple of friends that you can uh, wrangle to play with you. Um, I'm a little curious to see how that pans out on the Switch, though, because it's one of those games that you you need that you know coordination to to make work. And given that uh, voice chat online on Switch is less than ideal, I'm I'm really curious to see how this pans out. Um, yeah, I'm passing on it. It just doesn't interest me. I mean, it's good that it's coming to Switch, but um, no, nah, it, it does nothing for me personally. Yeah. Um, on Eddie's recommendation, also coming up on the 15th here, we finally get Zeo Drifter hitting the Switch. Yay! Um, and one that I'm personally excited for is uh, because I've I've wanted to play the fuck out of this but again it's one of those things it's been on pc for a hot minute but uh my laptop doesn't run shit so i haven't uh spent the money to buy it on pc but it's finally coming to uh console where i can play it is uh owl boy is coming out on the 13th um price wise it's a little bit salty uh, it's it's coming in about five bucks higher than it it is on PC, but uh, uh, coming in at twenty five bucks. Oh, twenty five. So PC was twenty. You're gonna pay an extra five bucks for the privilege of playing it on your Switch, but you know, as opposed to anything else, you can pick it up and take it with you. So uh, I, I I think instead of calling it the Switch tax, we need to just start calling it the portable tax. Well, it, so, it might it might have been programming. They might have to it, hire it more may people. Be, but um, but yeah, that's that's a thing coming up here that I'm looking forward to. Uh, from I I I will full disclosure. I have not gotten to physically play it. That being said, from everything that I've seen on it, and I've I've done a bunch of digging. It looks phenomenal, and it looks like it's going to be worth your time. And I, it, it reviewed extremely well when the PC version hit. So that's that's something to look forward to. Um, other than that, I think that's that's most of the worthwhile news. Um, I'm going to step out of the news realm for a minute here, and I'm I'm going to touch on rumor just for a minute because. Well, there, there were two that of them one, that caught my attention. That one we might have to say for next episode because I have to leave. At the no, end. you don't. Yes, I do. No, you. Do. I, I'm only just going to hit on them as bullet points. Rumor one is that uh, uh, Call of Duty Black Ops Four may be uh, hit and switch when that comes around. Um. I, I don't know how much credence I'm, I'm going to put to that. Rumor two seems to have a little more feasibility is that the uh, Crash Bandicoot Insane Trilogy is getting a Switch port. So I'm, I'm not going to dig real deep on those. Like I said, I just I, I wanted to hit bullet points that these are uh, a couple things uh, circulating in the rumor mill. Um, and at least one of them is worth keeping an eye on. So... I mean, we'll touch on it on Sunday, on the next episode, because I yep. think more more information about the Call of Duty one. Is I kind suspect of within the next week or two, we will know more about at least one of those things. 
Well, I, I know Edge Magazine has said something about the Call of Duty, but they can't say no more than that. So, mm-hmm. that's it. But that's all I know. in any case, uh, yeah, you're right. Let's let's call it a wrap. That's that's good for uh, for this week. Um, as always, you can uh, catch us on our home at shoutengine.com, uh, or you can uh, find us on your uh, platform of choice, either iTunes, Google Play Music, or YouTube, out there on the uh, phenomenal NGR YouTube channel. Uh, make sure you go and uh, give them the obligatory subscribe and like and comment and follow for the notifications and all that shit. Um, you can, of course, uh, check us out on our Facebook page. Uh, hit the like button for all the latest and greatest. Um, I, I promise is I am recovering. There will be more happening on the Facebook page again. Um, I, I'm i not dead yet, but I, I wouldn't venture to say that I am entirely out of the coma. So uh, as, as I slowly find my way back to the world of the living, uh, the Facebook page should be getting a little more active again. Um, also make sure you, uh, hit up the, uh, the delightful NGR Facebook page and their, uh, subsequent community as well. Yeah. So, um, Twitter, Twitch, uh, Facebook, YouTube. So yeah, that's, that, that should about, uh, sum it up. Uh, other than that, that's a wrap. And uh, boys and girls, I, I want to again apologize. We're late this week. It's it's beyond my fault, but it's my fault. Um, other than that, uh, with any luck, everything should be uh, square and back on track, and we should see you again on Monday. Yeah. Remember that, everybody. We'll see you next time on World One One Podcast. Bye. Peace.